Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed that you are so quickly forsaking 
the one who called you by the grace of Christ, for a different gospel. Not that there is another, but there are some who are disturbing you and wish to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone preaches to you a gospel other than the one that you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now currying favor with human beings or God? Or am I seeking to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave of Christ. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will remember His covenant forever. The Lord will remember His covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember His covenant forever. The works of His hands are faithful and just. Sure are all His precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. The Lord will remember His covenant forever. He has sent deliverance to His people. He has ratified His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. His praise endures forever. The Lord will remember His covenant forever. Please stand. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, 
A man fell victim to robbers. As he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, they stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning to all of you. Have you heard this certain doctor, Dr. Romy Paredes, the ultimate healing advocate? Maganda kasi yung sinasabi at kiniklaim po niya na meron daw pong dalawang causes kung bakit tayo nagkakasakit. The first cause is toxicity. And the second, deficiency. Toxic is the substance po na dapat wala sa ating katawan. No? Substance acquired in our body that should not be there. And on the other hand, deficiency means that a certain substance is lacking on our body. So, yung isa, toxicity, ay dapat yung substance na yun, wala sa katawan natin. The other one, yun naman ang kulang, deficiency. Kaya, ina-advocate niya para tayo'y gumaling at magkaroon ng transformation. Ang solutions ay dalawa. Again, detoxification and nourishment. So, kung meron tayong toxicity, we need to detox. And if we have deficiency, we need to be nourished. I'm sharing that with you, my dear brothers and sisters, because this concept is also true and can really be applied in our spiritual life, we become spiritually weak every time we are guilty of sin, of omission, deficiency, and commission toxicity. Thus, we have to detoxify and nourish ourselves spiritually. And the result 
would be healing and transformation. My dear brothers and sisters, in the gospel today, the scholar of the law asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? The Lord responded by telling a parable. And the lawyer, after hearing the parable from our Lord, realized that the priest and the Levite in the parable were not worthy of being called a neighbor because they had the deficiency in extending help to the robber's victim. The kind of deficiency would make one fall short or even not worthy in achieving eternal life. Thus, one needs to be nourished by showing more compassion and mercy as it was shown by the Samaritan traveler whose heart knows no color, no boundary, race, and religious affiliation. I suppose that the intoxication, too much indoctrination of man, made law and religious prejudice like that of exclusivity was the real reason why the priest and the Levite avoided themselves to be neighbors to the wounded. They had to act according to the law of their time. They need to be detoxicated by the innovative and transformative interpretation of the law by Jesus himself in order that they can perform what a believer of God ought to do. My dear brothers and sisters, in the parable, we are all invited first to nourish our deficiency by being a neighbor to whoever we encounter in our journey, to those who are physically and socially wounded or victims of any kind of violence and injustice. And second, detoxify ourselves from too much legalism, indifference, exclusiveness, and racism so that we can be a good Samaritan who will inherit eternal life. The Lord commanded the scholar of the law, do this and you will live. Please stand. Even today, many lie by the side of the road waiting for liberating words or a helping hand. Let us pray to the Father in heaven that our love may be expressed in concrete action rather than in beautiful words. Let us say, Lord, 
hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church in her pastors and people may show the love of God through active love of neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who work for the destitute will never lose heart or be discouraged. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may treat every person we meet with kindness and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the lonely and the infirm in our society may not be ignored or passed by. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may bring those who have died in his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as we pray for others, we ask you to help us to love and serve our neighbors, and so welcome your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through these sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises are nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep into the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Friends, this is Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.